Good evening, everybody. Welcome to um, this evening's licensing committee on the 13th of October, uh, 2022. <clears throat> I'd just like to welcome everybody. Um, just remind all members that this meeting is being live broadcast uh, on the internet. Um, we'll go straight into the agenda. Um, apologies for absence. I've got apologies from Councillor Andy Cooper, um, Rosie Claymore and Marie Bailey. I think everybody else is here. Unless anybody's got any more apologies. Ah, okay. I'm making that note. Thank you, Tracy. Okay, um, minutes of the previous meeting. Um, Councillor Rhodes. Happy to move those, Mr. Chairman. We've got a second of floor. Steve, all those in favour? Uh, moved, uh, that, and that will be recorded as signed. Thank you. Uh, any declarations of interest? No. Okay. Um, so our first full agenda item, which is the revised statement of the licensing policy 2023 to 2026. Um, so report of the assistant director of growth and regeneration. But I believe um, Sarah Gear is going to be presenting this report. So I'll hand over to you, Sarah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. The Council is under duty to keep its Statement of Licensing Policy under review every five years and to review the Council's Cumulative Impact Assessment every three years. However, it is deemed to be sensible to review both documents at the same time due to how integral they are to each other. The Statement of Licensing Policy sets out the principles that the Authority will apply to promote the licensing objectives when making decisions on applications. Attached to the report at Appendix 3 are a matrix of changes. <clears throat> there are no major changes to report made to the draft statement of licensing policy attached at Appendix 2. New sections have been inserted, including summary reviews, petrol stations, wholesale of alcohol and details of the designated public place orders. Members are asked to note that on page 3 of the draft statement of licensing policy, the population figure should read 78,600. Sergeant Finn and Inspector Coleman are in attendance today from Staffordshire Police. Should members have any questions in relation to the review of the Community of Impact Assessment? And the committee are asked to recommend that the draft statement of licensing policy and the review of the Community of Impact Assessment be approved for public consultation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, so, <coughs> um, I'll open it up for questions. Anybody got any questions for Sarah on the report at all? Looks like a resounding no. Uh, has anybody got any questions for Sergeant Finn or Inspector Coleman on the cumulative impacts at all? No? Have you got anything that you'd like to say on cumulative impacts at all? Just for members' benefit. Thank you, Chair. I suppose, certainly from a police perspective, we put uh, great emphasis on the inclusion of the cumulative impact policy. Providing it's used correctly, it, it is a, a perfect tool to, where possible, reduce violence and disorder within the geographical location as specified within, within the report as it is. Um, the police perspective would be would, is that if it was to be removed, the likelihood of an increase in crime and disorder is 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 almost a definitive one, really. Um, from Inspector Coleman's report, where information in relation to incidents of violence has been produced in, in a table format, the only town centre with a higher rate of violence and disorder, unfortunately, is within Stoke-on-Trent. Um, they didn't have cumulative impact originally and then not only brought in one but two policies um, in, a, in an attempt to curb what was occurring in that geographical location. So having seen similar geographical and demographic locations without them and then for them to be introduced, I think to retain it would be, certainly from the police perspective, what we would be requesting, please. Thank you. Thank you. 
Okay, so the recommendation is that committee uh, endorse the draft statement of licensing policy and associated review of the cumulative impact assessment um, and approve the documents for public consultation, which will conclude on the 13th of November 2022. Uh, we've got a Somebody to move that as well. Move moved by Councillor Clements, uh, second. Mm -hmm. Councillor Chris Cook, all those in favour? That is unanimous. Thank you. That's carried. Okay, thank you. That's the right report. Okay, um, agenda item number five is the revised Gambling Act 2005 Statement of Principles. Um, Again, I'm going to hand over to Sarah for this report. Yeah, that's, that's fine. Yeah. No problem. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, Chair. Members may recall that on the 23rd of June this year, the Gambling Act Statement of Principles was brought before this committee. At that committee, members resolved that the draft Statement of Principles be consulted upon and brought back to this committee. Consultation on the draft Statement of Principles was between the 24th of June 2002 and the 23rd of July 2002. A further consultation then took place between the 12th of August 2002 and the 11th of September due to an error in the effective dates of the policy. No responses were received from either consultation. Members are asked to note that a change to the population figure stated of 76,800 to 78,600 will be made. This is due to the updated figure being made available via the 2021 census. The recommendation before members today is that the Gambling Act Statement of Principles 2023-26, to attached at Appendix 1 to the report, be put before full council in December for adoption, subject to the population figure being updated. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, any members got any questions for Sarah on this report? Councillor Doyle. Uh, you said that you got no responses to the consultation. Can you just quickly take us through how you went about the consultation and what me uh, means of media use, please? Thank you, yes. Um, there was a comprehensive list of persons um, consulted upon via email, and this included operators of gambling premises within Tamworth. Um, and various other organisations. Um, I can provide a, a list um, of those consulted. Sorry, I should have had that, that with me. Yeah, on Appendix B, there is a list of those that were consulted upon. <coughs> Police, the Gambling Commission, um, all the other responsible authorities, which are at Appendix C of the policy. Um, Staffordshire Safeguarding Partnership, um, all the district councillors, sorry, the borough councillors, and the holders of the premises licences issued under the Gambling Act. Um, there were gambling and trade associations, um, and then organisations like Gamcare and Gamblers Anonymous. Um, it was also posted. Thank you. Any further questions at all? No. Okay, so the recommendation is that the uh, committee recommend to full council um, that they consider the Gambling Act 2005 Statement of Principles as suitable for adoption. We've got a mover for the recommendation. Councillor Doyle and a seconder. Councillor Wadrup. All those in favour? Is unanimous and carried. Thank you, everybody. 
Okay, so we'll move on to the final agenda item, which is agenda item number six, Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Licensing Policy 2023 to 2027. And I'll hand back over to Sarah again for this one. Thank you, Chair. Tamworth Borough Council currently has Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Licensing Guidance document, which is attached at Appendix 1 to the report. The draft Hackney Carriage and Private Policy attached to Appendix 3 has been developed by has been built upon the existing guidance document together with a variety of government documents as listed on page 2 of the report. The draft Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Policy sets out the Council's decision-making framework against which licensing decisions will be made. It also sets out conditions which drivers and operators are required to meet and an updated penalty point system. A matrix of changes made to the guidance document is attached to Appendix 2. An overview of the main changes and improvements are listed on page 2 and 3 of the report. Members are asked to note that on page 4 of the draft Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Licensing Policy, the vision should read, Tamworth celebrating our heritage, creating a better future, and will be amended. And the draft policy is expected to be in force from April 2023 to 2028 and not 27. Public safety has remained at the heart of all the changes and the proposed changes will put the licensing framework in line with best practice and make it clear and transparent. The committee is asked to recommend that the draft Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Licensing Policy be approved for public consultation and that following consultation, the draft policy be brought back to licence for members to consider prior to being, being adopted by full council. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, has anybody got any questions on the report? Councillor Oates. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, depending on whether you're looking at the uh, page numbers at the top of mod.gov or the ones printed on the PDF or the page itself, you're either on page 201, 261 or, or page 7. Um, committees, uh, and the basis of this question is when this goes through for final decision, uh, is there an option uh, for changes to be made should they be required uh, by, by officers and the reason I raise that is the licensing committee on point 2.6 this committee is made up of 13 members of the council well that may or may not change uh, uh, when there's a review of the constitution or not so does somebody have the ability to to change that um, the second rather well, I've got three points on this question um, it goes on to say the setting of fees and charges uh, and hackney carriage fares that goes from here to cabinet for actual decision, doesn't it? So I'm not sure that paragraph reads correctly. Uh, and I was just scrolling down beyond that while we're in this section, um, 2.10, uh, where applications are determined, the officer and or licensing committee take into consideration the facts of the application, uh, etc. cetera. Uh, we had a big discussion earlier this year about the role of this committee uh, in terms of uh, revoking licences or reviewing licences as opposed to officers. So I'm just concerned that that 2.1, is that clear enough that power sits with this committee to make those uh, those reviews and those those decisions? So there are three. Thank you, Councillor Oates. Um, Sarah, do you want to come back in there? or? In relation to the first question, um, that will very much depend on the kind of material nature of the amendment that's, that's been requested. So something that flows from the constitution, I would anticipate that um, the monitoring officer in conjunction with the relevant officers will be able to make that amendment. If it was a fundamental change to the policy, for example, in relation to vehicle specifications, then that's something that would need to go back out for consultation. Right. Yeah, so, so we just need to make sure we understand that when that goes through for final decision. Yeah. Thank 
Right. Mr Chairman, I'm, I'm happy with the rest of it if we want to have a discussion later when we find, find where it is, because it, it, it's not a material issue at this stage, is it, because we're going out to, to consultation, so happy for feedback. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Um, okay, the recommendation um, is that we approve this for consultation. Um, and that following the consultation, the policy comes back to committee for us to consider uh, together with any comments received prior to adoption at full council. Uh, we've got a mover for the recommendation. Councillor Doyle, uh, seconder. Councillor Cook, uh, all those in favour? And that is unanimous and carried. Um, okay, thank you everybody. Uh, thank you, Sarah, Anna and Wendy. Um, and thank you to all uh, support and Rebecca and good night everybody. Thank you very much for your attendance.